Mm -hmm. I'm proud of you, you know that. I hope you do. Penguins lose 4-3 to the New York Islanders in regulation. Thankfully, this game did not go to overtime or else I would probably have fallen asleep. I had a long day today, but just still, this was an annoying game. The Penguins didn't play bad necessarily, but it's still a game that you wish they could have won, got the two points out of. Um, and yeah, it's overall frustrating. We did get a lot healthier. We haven't had a lot of games this past week. We've only had, had two, uh, the one on Tuesday or Monday. And obviously the Devils had that COVID outbreak, so we couldn't play them in the series. And now our next game is not till Thursday. However, that did give us a chance to rest up, get practices in, get that damn power play, you know, back to being semi-decent, even though we didn't have a power play chance tonight. Um, so two players came back tonight in this game. Let's go over the line, see who they were. Those players are both defensemen, Mike Matheson and Crystal Tanger, both back in the lineup. And the Penguins' defense really goes from an AHL de defense to a passable NHL defense with Matheson and Latang back, even though you could argue that it was better the way uh, it was with Matheson and Latang's performance tonight. Same lines, uh, same forward lines. Pierre Al or Olivier Joseph is still on the first pairing, though, even with Latang back. That's great. Matheson, Marino, Ruido, CC, Jari gets a start in that. Our injury situation. Ricola, Pedersen, Trotman, Dumoulin on the defense, and Rodriguez is out. Zach Aston Reese is probably going to be the next name that comes back in. Um, we'll have to see when the what who gets kicked out if it's Jankowski or Drew O'Connor. Um, but yeah, that's a future problem. Also heading into this game, the New York Islanders were on a five-game losing streak. So that could either be a good thing or a bad thing for the Penguins. Um, given the fact that obviously, you know, they're on a skid. But still, this could be the game that they look to improve, which they eventually did. Now, two concerning statistics for the Penguins so far this season. Really, the story of this Penguins season so far has been... Being able to come back from behind and sometimes not really deserving it because the Penguins, you know, we've had a lot of games that have went to overtime. We've had a lot of games that the Penguins did not lead for the majority of the game, if at all, uh, but the Penguins still find ways to win. And, and while that's phenomenal that the Penguins, you know, have gotten those wins, it's it's still frustrating that that's the fashion that this, this team is doing it. Uh, I know we're still early in the season, but... It was getting a little annoying and repetitive, and the Penguins didn't do it tonight. And maybe that's a wake-up call to the team to just be like, you know, you can't win like that every game, and you're going to have to, you know, start playing with a lead. So the concerning statistics being that the Penguins have not had a two-goal lead this entire season. We are 5-10. We're 11 games. We'll be in our 12th game. Um and that's very concerning. The other concerning thing being that the Penguins have not led after the second period all season. That's, I mean, you got to play with the lead if you want to win. And I don't know what else to say there. That Jordan Everly, he really is a Penguin killer. Uh, Drew O'Connor did not get the puck deep. And the Islanders uh, continued uh, to pressure. And puck ends up at the back of the net. And I loved uh, listening to this. I was driving home. I was listening to the, the radio of Phil Bork. And Phil Bork was pissed with Drew O'Connor. He was like... If you want to get in the lineup, you cannot. If you want to be consistent in the lineup, you cannot be doing these things. And I just love the passion and enthusiasm out of Bork. It was it was really entertaining and refreshing to just be like, exactly. That's what we've been saying. The fans. Um, and then it's one. It's so it's one nothing. Everly gets his fourth. Um, and the Penguins are losing a lot of 50-50 puck battles and not having puck luck. That's really what this game boils down to, and that's pretty much the storyline of this game. The Penguins looked good for the most part of this game. But there's just no puck luck, and there's just no capitalization, and there's just no ability to play with the lead. And the Penguins, you know, they weren't able to do that tonight. The bright spot, though, of this game comes when Pierre-Olivier Joseph scores his first NHL goal. He jumped up on the play, and it was a simple wrist shot, and it just went perfect top corner. No chance for Varlamov there. Malkin had a goal later that was in the same exact spot. Um, so it's good to see that the Penguins are shooting well. Joseph is just looking stellar in a Penguins uniform, except for his uniform number should change. He shouldn't wear Jack Johnson's old number. Um, and yeah, he gets his first, and it was really happy to see that. That was, you know, the big, the big positive coming out of this game.
Before the period ends, though, Jordan Eberle gets his second, and Zucker loses the puck on uh, a simple turnover into the back of the net, and the Penguins again are trailing, heading into the uh, first intermission. Now, coming into the second, Jared McCann is not on the bench, and I don't know the status. The Penguins' best period, though, was in the second. Uh, Tristan Jari was a lot better in the second. He had a bunch of really good saves in the second. The top six is also, you know, working, doing what the top six should be doing. Sidney Crosby obviously had a great game like he does every game, and he was getting a lot of good chance. Brian Rust was flying out there. You cannot love Brian Rust. He's just a heart and soul hockey player. And the second line finally gets into the scoring. Um, Evgeny Malkin gets his second of the year. This is his first ever even strength goal this season, which is kind of concerning, but still obviously you want him to get it. Again, it was a perfect shot, like I mentioned, with the Joseph goal. It's top rate right corner, and the Penguins are tied in this one. And that's that's kind of concerning, though, because the Penguins really dominated the second period, but yet we're still tied. And the Penguins don't even have a one-goal lead, let alone, you know, a, a decent lead. And I even wrote down blowout because can we just have a game where the Penguins just fucking blow out a team or even get blown out by a team? Because there's just so much intensity, and I know that's, you know, part of hockey, but it's just... It's it's aggravating when you watch this team do the same things over and over again. But then the Penguins actually get their first lead. Jake Gensel scores. Um, the first line again was clicking, and Gensel got a, a nice shot. And and it gets the Penguins up 3-2 at the start of the third period early on. And it's exactly what the Penguins need, but they can't play with the lead. And Cal Clutterbuck eventually scores. So now I wrote down, you can't keep playing like this. This is a back-and-forth game, but the Penguins need to run away with the lead and be able to... Play with it. Penguins can't play with the lead right now. It's really what it is. Cal Clutterbuck, and this is the turning point of the night. This was a terrible goal uh, to give up by the Penguins. Pierre Oliver Joseph and uh, Crystal Tang both go behind the net looking for Casey Zizekas and leave Cal Clutterbuck wide open in front of the net. And I could have scored that goal. Like, Jari was like, what are you doing? There's a wide open guy right here. It's Jack Johnson-like, and it's tied up in this one. And then... Penguins, you know, just blow a wet fart at the end of the game with that goal. And also Teddy Bluger um, takes a delay game penalty. Obviously not intentional, but still can't be taking those, you know, high tips off the glass uh, this late in the game. The Islanders get a power play with just under four minutes left and they score on it. Andres Lee gets a power play goal. Jordan Eberle sets him up. Eberle again had a great night. Can't happen. And yeah, the Penguins kind of blew it. This is a pretty decent effort for the most part of the game. Until the end there, where things kind of just fell apart, and the Penguins, you know, can't play a full 60 minutes, can't play with the lead, and they lose this one 4-3. Um, Jari left the net with just over two minutes left. Malcolm and Latang did their little thing where they didn't get pucks to the net, and that was it. Um, Andres Lee, Jordan Everly, and Pierre Olivier Joseph are my three stars of the night. And my question for you guys, even though I didn't really mention him much, Mike Matheson did not look good tonight. Um, he had a bunch of bad turnovers, was out of position a lot. And, you know, just was flat-footed a bunch. My question to you is, are you concerned about him? And obviously the Penguins need him right now with the defensive injuries. But we've got him for six more years now on the contract. Are you concerned about the cap hit, the way he's playing, the guy we traded to get him, or all three? Um, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. But that'll do it for this one. Thank you all. Not until next Thursday is next game. COVID is just fucking up the schedule. And I won't see you guys until then. I will be posting other videos, of course. I'm going to be posting a Super Bowl video, a hockey player or a hockey fan's reaction to, to uh, the NFL is coming out tomorrow for Super Bowl Sunday. Like, comment, subscribe. Thank you all for everything. The support that I've gotten from starting just this small YouTube channel has been amazing so far. And I really do appreciate it. 100 subscribers already. I joined this like three months ago. And I really appreciate it. Um, shout out to, you know, everyone that's helped me so far. Um, but I guess I won't see you guys for Penguins Fan Reactions until next Thursday. So until then, um, I'll catch you guys later and go Pens.